Hi, this is Jeff Challen. In this screencast, I'm going to show you how you can trace information about your Android application as it runs. So we've been encouraging this, this semester to examine what's going on in your programs by putting in various types of logging statements. Normally in Java, if you have access to a console, we use system.out.println to figure out what's going on. On Android, things are a little bit different. You're running a full GUI application, and so there's no console that it's going to print to. It actually has you know, a whole um, you know, GUI that it can draw things to. And so it is possible to display messages on the screen itself, but this is also a good point to introduce you to a more fully functional logging system. So Android does have a way for you to log strings in a way very similar to system.op.println. And it's actually more sophisticated and more flexible than the types of logging that we've been doing so far. So let's take a look at our uh, Android application. This is, the, um, this is the solution set for MP4. And I'm now gonna look at the Android application pieces. So in here, um, in the Java folder, and if I go back to the Android view, I can find this under app, Java, main activity. So the main activity is something that represents a screen. This is something that we'll have another screencast on. Um, this, is, this represents a screen in the application. Our application has only one screen that it shows. And if you read through this code, which we encourage you to do, you can see it doing things like setting up handlers for the various buttons that are shown on the display. So when you click a button, something's going to happen. We'll cover this in another screencast. Here are some of the handlers that, that uh, are set up. So this is a function that runs every time this button is called that's responsible for doing whatever it is that the button is supposed to do. And so there's code here that you know handles things like saving files, uh, using the camera, downloading things from the internet, um, et cetera. And like, all the programs that we've written frequently we kind of want to know what's going on what happened you know i clicked a button and nothing happened and so i'm trying to figure out why didn't anything happen or something strange happened and i didn't understand why and so i might not really understand the interaction between a couple of different pieces of my system or something like this um what's the equivalent of system.out.println here and the equivalent is are these log messages so here's an example of one let, let me go up here and, and look at the button handlers actually so here's an example of a logging message in android Let's see if i can make the text a little bit bigger apparently not um, so here's a logging message Maybe if i do this nope that doesn't work either you can see that it has this format where i say log and there are actually multiple logging levels. So that's one of the things that distinguishes logging from using something simple like system.out.println. System.out.println, there's kind of one level. There's actually two levels because there's also a stream of error messages that an application can generate, but we've really been only using one, system.out.println. With logging, sometimes we want to distinguish between, um, we sort of, uh, logging allows us to prioritize messages. So some messages are really important, means something went wrong. Other messages are there for debugging. And so sometimes what we might do is while we're debugging a particular application, we would look at the debugging messages. And then once we deploy the application, we might only care about warnings or errors or other types of high priority messages. So it's sort of like the low priority uh, print statements are there to help you understand what the program is doing. The high priority ones are there to um, you know, debug things when something's going wrong, when there's an error. And so you can see that we've actually put in a bunch of these debugging statements already for you as part of the source code that you're starting with. And so let's see, let's go up here. So let's, let's look at the, the, the ones for the background image. So there's, there's a number of button handlers for the background image. And what these do is that when you click on the various background images that you have available to you as part of the application, they change, ensure that the background changes appropriately. Okay, so I can see here a, a logging statement, and this is the one that sets the Bon Iver concert background button, um, uh, background when this button is clicked, and I put in a, a message. The tag here, so log, the log, Android logging system actually takes two arguments. The first argument is a tag, which specifies, um, identifies the kind of message. 
The tag that we're using here is just MP4 for everything. But if you were building a much bigger application, you might want to distinguish between logging messages that were generated by one part of your code versus logging messages that were generated by another part of your code. But here tag is just MP4. Um, there's no reason that you can't change that if you want. Okay, so let's see how, to, how these are actually uh, used. So I'm gonna run this on my, um, on my emulator. So I've got this guy already going over here and I already, already had the app running, okay. So then the question becomes, where do these go? How do I see them? And on Android Studio, there's this tab down here called Logcat. So let's open this up. And when you open this up, it's a little frightening at first. So the first thing to figure out is, do, am I connected to the right device? So I'm connected to my Pixel 2 emulator, so that's correct. Um, am I connected to the right application? So I'm connected to edu.illinois.cs.cs125.mp4, that's also correct. Remember I said that logging allows me to choose the level. And so here I can actually choose to just show me error messages. Um, and there are some error messages that are being generated by the app. There's errors going on on Android all the time. It's kind of amazing that anything works. Um, here I'm gonna show errors and warnings. And you can see that as I reduce the priority level, more and more messages are being shown. If I show verbose messages, then I'm kind of seeing everything. So the format for a message on Android is here's a timestamp. This is information about the process that generated the message. So that's kind of which application uh, generated that message. Here's the level. E is for errors, W is for warnings, um, let me see, in, I is for information, this is an informational message. Um, there's also V for boast and, and D for debug. Um, and then, you know, whatever the string was, right? So here's a string that was passed to this particular logging command. And so I can really log anything using this system. Now, what, what you might be trying to figure out is like, how do I find stuff, right? So um, you know, there's all this output being generated and you, and you will find this on Android. Like Android is, is generating log messages all of the time. Most of them you don't care about. And so that's one place where we can start to use our tags. So let's look and look at, um, let's see. So let's show only this uh, selected application. And then let's look at MP4 and let's look at debugging messages for MP4. And there's still more information here than we would probably want because MP4 is actually matching on the, um, it's also matching on the name of my app. And so if I change this tag to be something else, it might be a little bit easier, but this is okay for now um, because we're still gonna be able to see the messages that we want. Um, if we wanted to do this further, I could actually match on part of the string for this particular message. So I could say, I'm only gonna look at things background. And now I can see there's actually no messages. Okay, so let's do something that's gonna generate one of these messages. Okay, so I clicked on the button that sets the Facebook background. And what I can see is that this piece of code right here ran because that's what generated this message. If I change this, I have to actually rebuild the app and uh, install it again before I'm gonna see those changes. But as the app is running, um, this provides me a way to uh, figure out what's going on. So let's actually do this. Let's make a change to the tag name. We'll call this uh, main activity since that's the uh, that's where we are. We're, we're in the main activity for the app, the main screen. Let's rebuild this. And we'll see how this makes our life a little bit easier. This might be something I might suggest doing. So I'm building the application. I'm gonna reinstall it over here. In preparation, I'm gonna look for MP4 activity. I have to be able to spell it right. Okay, so now it's, now it's running. And now if I do, um, oh, I still need to be able to, oh, sorry, main activity, main activity. Yep, here we go. And so these are all messages that were generated by the app, right? Um, do we have permission to write to external storage? That's generated um, up here during the app startup phase. When the app starts, it actually tries to figure out whether the user has provided it with permission to write to storage. If the answer is true, then um, it, that changes where we save things essentially. So that's why that's there. Uh, there's a debugging message from uh, one of the, the pieces of code that uh, manipulates the canvas in the image. And you'll see essentially every any time I click a button, um, I'm gonna see that one of my handlers is going to run. Um, 
hope this says no image selected. Okay, yeah, because there's no image selected, so these buttons shouldn't work yet. Um, so let's open an image. Hopefully this still works once I have an image selected. Yep, and every time I run this, you can see that um, there are a number of log messages that are being um, generated, particularly this one here, shift down button. So we've set things up so every button generates a message. This is designed to help you with your debugging, but you can put messages anywhere you want. And so let's actually, um, well, I mean, this is, this is a good starting point, right? So this gives you a sense of what you can do with the Android logging subsystem. It's very powerful. Um, and very flexible. So you can choose to organize your messages via tags. You can choose a level for your messages. You can see that we have cases where we, we issue warnings because something happened that we didn't expect, um, et cetera. So this is uh, an introduction to how to use Android's logging system.